Today we're checking out one of those transitional motherboards. This time it's the MSI MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. Wow, that is really a mouthful. I reckon MSI needs to get rid of the MAG and MPG stuff just to make it easier for people. Anyways, let's roll the intro and then we'll have a chat. As usual with our motherboard content, these videos are not reviews. They're just overviews so we can take a bit of a look at what's on the board and what physically comes in the box with these brand new motherboards. Also, because these new CPUs aren't out and there's still an embargo, we can't do any of that. Anyway, let's take a closer look. All right, ladies and gents, it's time to take a bit of a look at the MSI MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. That's a heck of a mouthful, but let's get that motherboard out of the way so we can take a closer look at everything that comes with this motherboard in the box. First off, we have this little sticker. Now, this is a case badge that gives you extra performance. This may or may not be true, but you know what? Science is science. <laughs> All right. Next up, we've got a bunch of documentation. Well, this is basically a bunch of stickers you can stick on your motherboard and some uh, marketing stuff and basically all the standard stuff that you never really look at when you get yourself a new motherboard. It is included here. There are two of those M.2 clips. Now, basically the way this works is you don't need to screw in your M.2 drives. You just put these in and then you clip your drives in and Bob's your uncle, you're good to go. There's also two SATA or SATA cables for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rust drives. There's also this. This is a USB stick. This USB stick means that there's no disc in the box. And so if you want to make a Windows installer, go ahead and use this USB stick as well. There's also the quick installation guide. Now this is a revised version that talks about socketing LGA 1700 CPUs, how to mount coolers, and basically all of that stuff to get you up and running if you've never built before. So this is a great bit of documentation to help you get started. And then there is the user guide. Now this will basically walk you through what everything is on the board, where everything is on the board, how to configure the BIOS, some overclocking stuff, and everything you need to basically know when when you're building for the first time. There's also a set of antennas for the built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Let's unsheath this motherboard so we can take a bit of a closer look at the MSI MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. First up, we've got the front panel audio header. There's a set of three pin five volt addressable RGB headers. There's two right next to each other. There's some PWM fan connectors next to that. There is also a Thunderbolt header, which will probably require an additional add-in card. There's another PWM fan connector, two USB 2.0 headers for legacy stuff like coolers and RGB controllers and all that jazz. There is also two SATA connectors for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives. There's the front panel connector for all your lights and all your switches and another PWM fan connector right up the end. If we take a look at the layer behind that, there's an RGB switch to turn your lighting on and off, two more SATA ports for your 2.5 inch SSDs or your spinning rush drives, and a TPM header which you don't need to use because TPM is built into most modern CPUs. There's two more SATA connectors on the right hand edge of the board and if we scoot on up, you can see that there's a USB type C front panel header, a USB 3.2 front panel header, a 24 pin power connected to send juice to your brand new motherboard. There's also this little diagnostic LED array that's on the surface of the board that's for postcodes. And there's also another PWM fan connector up the end there. There's a 12 volt four pin analog RGB header, a three pin five volt addressable RGB header, two more PWM fan connectors. And if we scoot to the other side, you'll see that there is two eight pin EPS power connectors to send juice to your brand new 12th gen old Lake CPU. All right, let's take a look at the PCIe slot. So the top one, which has the metal shielding, is a full PCIe gen five by 16 slot. The rest of the slots on this board are PCIe Gen 3. Even that by one slot is Gen 3. The two by 16 size ones are also Gen 3, but they're by four wired. This is featuring Intel's brand new Z690 chipset, which doesn't require active cooling at all. So you can see it's just got a regular heatsink over on the chipset. If we want to talk about power delivery for this board, it features a 16 plus one plus one phase digital VRM setup with 70 amp smart power stages. 
That in total means that this board has 18 phases on its VRM layer. You can see that the cooling here is more than adequate on the heat sinks and as usual, the whole IO cover is basically a heat sink for that part of the VRM layer. This board does feature Intel's brand new LGA 1700 socket. We're just gonna pop it open so you can take a bit of a look at it. It features 1700 contact pins for the brand new 12th gen Old Lake CPUs, which at the time of filming this video isn't out yet. But this gives you a bit of a look at the socket itself and what is new. In terms of cooler support, this features the standard hole spacing for LGA 1700, which is actually the same as LGA 1366 and 1356 as well. So most coolers will actually be more than compatible out of the box. If we flip the board over, you can see that it's got the standard keep out zones that are marked on the back of most MSI boards. And you can see that hole pattern for the cooler a little bit clearer as well. It features four DDR4 RAM slots with support for up to 128 gigs of RAM at 5200 megahertz overclocked when you enable XMP. Alrighty, let's rip off the M.2 heatsink so we can take a bit of a closer look at the storage situation for this board. Alright, let's have a look here. What do we got? We've got a bunch of M.2 slots, so there's four in total, three of which are PCIe Gen 4, and there's one PCIe Gen 3 slot as well. You'll also notice that it's using those M.2 clips to clip the drives in. I didn't demonstrate it here, but you can see them on the top M.2 slot and the one towards the bottom. For the two slots that don't have them installed on this board, it comes in with the board as well, which I already showed. And there is a single Gen 3 slot, as I mentioned here as well. In terms of rear IO, you've got HDMI, DisplayPort, BIOS flashback, USB 3.2 galore, 2.5 gigabit ethernet, USB Type-C, Wi-Fi 6, and 7.1 digital surround sound with the built-in audio interface with optical and SPDIF output, and also that integrated IO shield. I hope you enjoyed this first look and overview of the MSI MAG Z690 Tomahawk Wi-Fi DDR4. Hello, cat. What I was saying is thanks for watching this video. Bindi always loves to interfere with when I'm filming on this table in this position. Anyways, guys, yeah. Now, this board, like I mentioned in the intro, is one of those transitional phase boards. We're gonna see a bit of this where It'll feature the new Old Lake CPUs with DDR4 memory for people who are wanting to upgrade to the new CPUs and not necessarily forfeit the RAM they already spent money on. I think these boards are really important and I've seen a lot of comments from people saying, oh, why are they doing this and why do they have DDR4 boards with DDR5 and PCIe Gen 5 and all this stuff? This happens every single RAM generation without fail. We've seen boards in the past that have both types of RAM slots on them as well, but I've, I guess they decided not to do that this time around. So it's not peculiar. It's been happening for like 30 or 40 years every time there's a new RAM generation, guys. So it's not, it's not anything we haven't seen before. We saw it with DDR3 to DDR4 and obviously it's happening again. One thing I noticed about this board being that it's kind of a lower to mid range Z690 board is this board also features two EPS power connectors. So that's probably telling us a whole lot about power consumption with these new CPUs, but obviously I haven't even had time to power up test bench with one yet. So even if I wanted to, I couldn't because I haven't tested anything yet. There's just been no time whatsoever. The fact that this has four M.2 slots is, is pretty good considering we saw X570S boards, the top end ones that only had this. So Z690 is coming out strong. What do you reckon, Binny? She thinks it's interesting. She's having a bit of a sniff of the board. Okay, bye-bye. In terms of pricing for this board, I did find some US pricing. They're going for around 299 US dollars at the time of filming this video for pre-order, obviously, because these aren't technically out yet. As far as pricing, I think that's definitely on the lower spectrum for Z690 motherboards, but that's probably to do with the fact that it uses DDR4. That's probably to do with the fact that it uses DDR4, like the reason why it's cheaper. And the Tomahawk boards are usually in that cheaper price range anyway. I think that's just about gonna wrap up what I've got to say about this board, but make sure you stick around for some cinematic things. I'm your boy, Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek and yeah, let, let's do a thing.